Hello, hello. It's Dr. Pam here for Wellness Wednesday. Is anybody there? That's okay. We're going to get started because I'm at the end of my lunch time. And so I need to go on and, and get this done and get back to uh, seeing patients. But today we're going to talk about autism because this month is National Autism Awareness Month. So as a holistic pediatrician, I could not let this month go by without saying something about autism. I, you know, I do treat some patients who are on the spectrum. So I just want to give you a few little facts about autism and kind of dispel some of the myths about autism. So first of all, autism is considered, it's called ASD, Autism Spectrum Disorder, which means there is an entire spectrum from somebody who may just be mildly affected to someone who is severely affected. So all children with autism are not going to look exactly the same way. Now, generally, it's diagnosed around two years of age, um, around 18 years of age, and I'm, I'm sorry, not 18 years, 18 months, sorry, around two years to 18 months. Now, around 18 months of age, there will generally be a screening done in most pediatricians' office to, um, you know, that can pick up on if something is actually uh, not quite well, if your child's not quite where they should be developmentally. Now, when you're going to your pediatrician's visits, this is why it's very important to visit your pediatrician for your regular well child checks because one of the things that we do is we assess the development of that child. And so we're doing these all along, but I know in, in my office at 18 months, I actually do an additional screening that will um, that will let me know if there are some extra concerns and if there should be some more some more screening done. So that way, if someone is not developing appropriately, we can figure out figure it out early enough to get them the services that they need that will help them. So. Um, the other thing that I want to talk about is when I said myths, when you go online, like, you know, now everybody likes to Google everything. Um, but when you go and Google something, you sometimes freak yourself out because you can Google symptoms of autism. And because your child has one characteristic of children who are on the spectrum, that may lead you to believe that your child is on the spectrum, which is probably not going to be true if that's the only the only characteristic that your child has. So, you know, be really careful about that. Of course, when in doubt, you can always consult your pediatrician, you know, or your uh, health care provider about that. And that person will be able to, you know, to really evaluate your child and figure out, if that is a problem. So you always want to make sure that you're going to have your regularly scheduled um, well child visits so that your child can be assessed uh, for the appropriate developmental stage. And if you do have a child who is diagnosed, you want to get them into, you want to get their services provided to them as soon as possible. There are various services that are provided depending on where you live. Um, you can generally get a lot of services um, at no cost depending on the age of the child. The older the child gets, a lot of times the less services that you can get. So it's, that's another reason for your child to be diagnosed as early as possible. And there are some alternative treatments available for autism, um, there, there's a program now through the American Academy 
of pediatrics. Uh, you can find other practitioners who can help you with things. There's a diet called GAPS diet that's been very helpful. But you really want to work with somebody and figure out what's best for your child. It's not a one size fit all. There's not a treatment per se that's going to work for everybody. So, you know, that's why you have to figure out what's best for your child because what I've seen happen in the past is that you know, one parent will say, I use this and this really helped my child. And then another parent uses it for their child and it doesn't work. So then, you know, they start bad mouthing, you know, that particular therapy saying, oh, it, it doesn't work because it doesn't work, didn't work for my child. But, you know, everybody is different and, oh, someone's here, but I can't see who you are. Everybody is different, so you just want to make sure that you go and you get your individualized treatment approach for your child, you know, if you have to do that. So if you do have a child who is on the spectrum, you know someone who has a child on the spectrum, you suspect that your child or someone else's child is on the spectrum, the first step is to make sure that they go in to, um, you know, to their pediatrician or their health care provider and actually get some type of evaluation and then you can go from there. Don't totally freak out because you read something on Google. Uh, just leave it up to the people who are qualified to to make that diagnosis. Okay? So, Thank you for joining me today. Um, I'm going to sign off now, but I would like to invite you for next week. Remember, next week is going to be, be the beginning of a new month, and the first week of the month, we do the jars revealed. So we will be looking at my, my experiment that's been going on since October. Um, I know that a lot of people look forward to the jars episode. So the jars episode is coming up next week. So you have a lovely rest of your Wellness Wednesday. Bye-bye.